Hey guys, so today inside of Unity we are going to be going over how to use basic collision. Um, so Unity has a handful of different uh, collision models. Some are more expensive processing wise than others. Um, so we're going to go over exactly um, how some of those work. So here in Unity I have my big looking rock model. Um, and say we want to be able to walk all over this thing. Um, there's a couple different types of colliders that we can add to it. <clears throat> so if we go over here to add component and all of these <clears throat> uh, options can be gotten to if you go under component uh, physics you can get everything here. So I'm just going to go add component physics and I'm going to add a box collider. So if we look here then my box collider is around the object but you know it's not very accurate uh, to the model. You know if if we were going to try to walk on it we'd be walking on top of it or if it was turned sideways just on the side. Um, but it would not appear in any way that we are walking, um, you know, on on its individual little surfaces here. Now, a box model or a box uh, collider is very inexpensive as far as physics goes. So um, it can be very good to use uh, box colliders when you have more complex mes meshes like this that may be like for walls or um, things that. Um, you want to block the player in with or um, you know the, the player doesn't need to have super accurate uh, collision with. You can use a box collider um, for that. You can use a, uh, a sphere collider is another one that's pretty inexpensive and you can change the, the radius of that. Um, all the uh, or I'm sorry most of the colliders have these options where you can change uh, some of their sizing as well as uh, their offset. Um, so a sphere collider is also pretty inexpensive. Um, the capsule collider is not bad. Uh, capsule colliders are great for characters because you can give them uh, height. Um, you can give them height um, as well as uh, a radius. So you can uh, encapsulate a, a character inside of um, a volume like a capsule collider. Again, you can also offset it. Um, and uh, you can also change uh, which direction is the normal direction for that collider. So my up is Z. So um, if, you, if, if it's a super important mesh to you um, and you don't want to use one of those, you can use a, a mesh collider. So mesh collider, eh, you don't really see it here, but what it is is it is actually matching the geometry exactly of my rock. So if we look here, plane, that's actually what the rock is. So it is actually just duplicating my rock mesh and it is using it as its collision. Now those can be extremely expensive as far as, as, far as collision detection goes and they're not always the most accurate because um, sometimes when rays are being cast for a collision um, <clears throat> mesh colliders don't always work out uh, sometimes the rays can pass through them uh, in my experience um, normally if there's a wall I can accidentally walk through or something like that chances are it has a mesh collider on it now you can make your mesh colliders a bit more efficient you can uh, build a super low res um, version of your mesh uh, inside of like Max or Maya or something and put it uh, bring it in and then use it as the as the physics model uh, mesh in here so if I build a low resolution rock and brought it in I could actually use it as the mesh or um, you can try by turning on convex if it is a um, a more simple form and you can have um, you can have uh, unit D try to uh, interpolate a better way to um, configure what uh, what this rock is. So this is a uh, a quick way to make your mesh a little bit um, more efficient uh, for collision detection. Um, again, you want to avoid these. Um, 
avoid from ha avoid having these all over the place just because they can be uh, more of a memory suck. Um, yeah, so I'm going to duplicate this one actually, and I'm going to put it up here. So any type of moving object that you want to be able to collide with needs to have a um, needs to have a rigid body attached to it, which is another type of physics component. So your characters normally have rigid bodies, enemies, um, <coughs> bullets, um, normally uh, just different types of collision detection um, where you want to have some sort of physics and movement to it. So here I added a rigid body to my object and it's using gravity. Um, you can set what its mass is, um, drag, angular drag, uh, whether or not it needs to have uh, discrete collision uh, detection, continuous, dynamic, um, discrete's fine here. So if I hit play, it's going to drop my rock on top of my other rock. There it goes. Dunk. So see right there is the physics at work. Um, again, if I was using a um, a box collider, uh, we would get a little bit different of uh, collision detection. Use a box. See, not nearly as accurate, but a whole lot more efficient. Um, or if I just wanted it to be able to keep rolling, add a physics, add a sphere collider to it. Oh, oh no, oh no, uh, there it goes. So that's the basics on uh, different types of colliders inside of Unity. Um, so remember, uh, use box colliders, uh, sphere colliders where you can, um, just because they are so much more efficient. If you absolutely need to use your mesh colliders, uh, that's just what you have to do. Um, but you can build uh, other low poly versions of um, your meshes and then bring those in and use those as the mesh collider to be a little bit more efficient. Or you can try if it's a convex type of mesh like this rock is, then you can use your, uh, your inflate mesh um, to try to figure out how to be a little bit more efficient without creating too much more work for yourself. And again, if you have any type of moving object that you want to be able to collide with others, make sure you have a rigid body attached to it. So if this video was helpful, uh, please like it. Uh, please follow the channel if, uh, if you are so inclined. And uh, thanks for watching.